So if you have a Roland GR100 or a Roland GR300, this is the one modification that you really must do. What we're going to do um, is replace the internal blue tantalum power supply capacitors. There are two of them. We're going to replace those with a modern equivalent. And the reason I'm saying that you must do this is because uh, these capacitors are, are known to fail. And when they fail, they short out the power supply. And the unit can only operate for so long with part of the power supply shorted out. You're basically taking one side of the power supply and just shorting it straight to ground and at some point you're going to end up damaging the unit. Uh, the parts for this probably cost less than a dollar. Uh, all you need is a soldering iron uh, and some way to like desoldering wick or you can use a desoldering tool. I mean the whole thing should probably only take you like maybe five or ten minutes. Um, so I'm doing that on this GR100 but it's pretty much the same procedure. I'll include photos on the procedure from a uh, GR300, uh, but again, if you own a GR100 or a GR300, they didn't use these same parts in uh, other uh, synthesizers, but if you have a GR100 or a GR300, definitely you want to swap out uh, these uh, power supply capacitors for the uh, modern uh, equivalent. You know, before we get started uh, actually working on the GR100, I thought it might be fun just to have a real quick look at what's inside of the GR100. This top board is the voice board, and you'll notice that we have three strips. And now these three strips are actually the six different voice channels. And if you look, you'll notice the parts kind of mirror each other along each side. So you've got one string here, the next string here, and then in the middle are parts that are common to each string. And the really interesting part is this chip here, which is the IR3109. Now the IR3109 is a dual 12 dB per octave. Uh, it's configured as a, as a minus 12 dB per octave low pass filter. So we've got three of these and each chip has two filters. So we have one half of the chip for one side and the other half of the chip for the other side. So with these three, we get six channels of independent low pass filter. Now in the Roland GR300, you'll find this exact same chip, but there's only one of them because in the Roland GR300, it's configured as a minus 24 dB per octave filter. So that's why in the GR300, the filter sweep seem more dramatic because it's a stronger cutoff. Now the part that we're gonna be working on is right over here in the corner. We can see for the power supply, there's the uh, transformer. We have various capacitors here to smooth out uh, the, uh, uh, the voltage. We have a rectifier. And then right down here, we have these two little blue tantalum capacitors and we're just going to replace those two capacitors because these are the parts that are very likely to fail and when they fail it's just the same thing as taking one of the sides of this power supply and just tapping it right to ground. So to loosen the voice board we need to do two things. First we've got two screws on this side that we're going to uh, take out and then on the other side of the voice board at the far end the end with the uh, input and output connectors. We've got some standoffs and we're going to pinch those standoffs and that will release the uh, voice board. So first we just take out those two screws. So here's what we want to do. We've got these two standoffs. There's one that's outside of the frame that you can't see. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and just squeeze those together and give a little tug. There we go. We got one. Do the next one over here. Let's see, no, that's not quite enough. There we go, there's two. Okay, so this is the, the last one that we need to work on. So let me see if I can get down in here, give that a little bit of a squeeze, and then lift up on the board a little bit. Uh, not quite there, I, I can still see it hasn't quite gone down yet. All right. Ah, there we go. Let me see, I think that got it. We removed the two screws in the front. We just gave a little squeeze to those uh, standoff posts and then lifted up on the board. So now we can see that we can actually sort of push the whole board to the back. I need to push this guy back. It's a little bit more to get, let's see. There we go. So now with that done, I can lift the whole voice board up and now we can see underneath the voice board is uh, the control board 
and then uh, the uh, overall processing such as the um, the envelope and we also have the circuitry for the uh, analog uh, uh, chorus uh, parts in that as well so this is a look on the inside of the GR100. So this is where we're going to be doing the work. This is IC7 that we looked at from the other side. You'll see there's C22 and C24 and those are not po polarized. They're just capacitors. It doesn't matter uh, which way you put them in. There's no positive or negative side to them. But next to them you'll see C25 and C23 and they do have an indication of a plus marking. So those are polarized capacitors and those are the ones we're going to be taking out uh, here in a minute. And also note that when you install the new capacitor, you're going to have to make sure that you correctly match the polarity marking because if you put the negative on the plus, then there's a pretty good chance that that capacitor might explode and, and then you're going to have a real mess on your hands. So you want to make sure that you get that uh, new part installed correctly. All right, so uh, see the solder's melting. I hit that and it sucked the solder right off. This thing's pretty amazing. Let's go now for the other side. Okay. Right, I can see the solder's clear there. Now let's go one more here. Okay, maybe a little bit left there, we'll see. Okay, I feel pretty good about the first one. I think maybe I didn't quite get all the solder on the second one, so I'm gonna go back and, and do those one more time, do the second side one more time. I don't think I had good contact with the uh, solder pad. That looks better. Uh, let's see here. Wow. Actually. Wow. <laughs> so when I went back and touched this one up again, the capacitor just <laughs> fell flat out, which was pretty nice. So if, if the capacitor doesn't fall out the first time, now here's what we're going to do. I have a little tool. So the capacitor, the, this one side, once, once I touch it up, the capacitor just fe fell right out. Oh, and you can see on this side, you can see that the, the it's loose. Okay, so now it's it's fallen out. So both of the capacitors are gone. So when we flip this over, we're going to see uh, the empty holes where we're going to be putting in a new capacitor. Okay, so those are the two capacitors that just dropped right out. And now let's go have a look at the empty hole. There you go. Now you can see that's where we're going to be adding in our capacitors. And I'm going to be using, I think they're uh, 10 um, microfarad uh, 25 volt capacitors. Okay, I just checked the video from the <clears throat> desoldering the removal of the capacitors and I see that you got a nice close-up of the back of my head rather than the actual tool I'm using. So let me just show you. This is the desoldering tool that I used and you, that when you heard that little noise that was me pulling the trigger here. And uh, anyway, yeah, I think these are discontinued but they've got something like it now. So this is actually what I used to uh, get the solder off there. This is uh, the part I'm going to be using as a replacement part. I got these from Mauser and I looked at the link I have on the website. I think these are like 27 cents each. So a very inexpensive part considering that they're going to save your unit from overheating. And then here are a copy of the original service notes. So these are the original service notes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just double checking so these are the original service notes and if we look we can see those uh, the capacitors that we're going to be replacing that they're uh, in the service notes here they're showing them as 35 uh, volts so they work up to a range of 35 volts uh, with a value of uh, 10 microfarad the part that i just showed you is 50 volts so it's going to rate it up to 50 volts it, it's fine if you go over the rated voltage since the transformer in the GR100 and in the GR300, it's a bipolar uh, plus and minus 15 volts. So it's a, it's a really a 30 volt output. So 35 volts covers a 30 volt transformer. 50 volts also covers a 30 volt transformer. If you look up closely here, we can see there's a negative there, there's a positive, and over here we have a negative and a positive. So we want to make sure that we uh, install the new capacitor appropriately. And on these capacitors, there's two legs and one leg is clearly marked with the minus sign. So the minus sign, you want to go into the hole that's minus. I bet you figured that part out already. And then on the other side, it's gonna go in with the minus sign there. Let's put this guy here and put that guy there. Okay, so 
that is a C23 and C25 with the minus leg into the uh, part that's marked uh, with the minus symbol or the negative voltage. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some some masking tape and put some masking tape on there just to hold that in place because I'm going to have to turn it upside down in order to solder that part in place. I just put a little masking tape on there just to hold that in place so that when I flip it upside down it doesn't come out. I've got a, I think it's a 25 watt Radio Shack soldering iron. You know from back in the days when there was a Radio Shack around every corner. Like right up close. Got that there? Okay. Okay, so let's see here. We got this. All right, so here we are working on working on number one. All right, that looks uh, like a good solder connection to me. Yeah, that looks like we could maybe use just a touch more. I've never been really great at soldering, but you know you want to heat the work up, which you're soldering on. You want to get that nice and hot, and then have the solder flow over the joint. I'm sure that there's YouTube videos that will really show you how to do this job really well. And I got one more here to go, so let me try coming at this from a different angle. I'm going to try and do my best to Let's see. Okay, there we go. So that should do it. Let me see. There's number one, number two, number three, and number four are nail clippers. So here's my nail clipper. Let's see. Here we go. And okay. All right. Let's see. I had a look at the video and I see that <clears throat> I did manage to film the back of my hand this time. But um, we've got everything all wrapped up there. Everything looks good here, so all we need to do is just put the board back in place. So we want to scoot it back, get just the front to drop into place here. All right, let me slide the unit back. Okay, and I've got my two screws here for the front. We'll get started with those. Once we have the front hole lined up, it's going to make it a lot easier to get those standoff post. I'm not going to tighten that quite all the way down. And let's see, here we go. There's the other screw. Wow. Yeah. I guess in order for me to really see what I'm doing, I have to get up close and then I just get myself in the way. Right then, so let's have a look here. So yeah, it looks like our new capacitors are nicely seated there. That shouldn't be any problem there. And we just now want to line up those standoff posts in the back. All right, so we're just about all set. So I've got my one, two, three posts lined up in the back. These guys aren't quite tightened down all the way. I'm going to push these in the back until they snap in place. Okay, that's all set there. And then we're just going to tighten this guy up all the way. And then, just because I'm on the cautious side, I'll uh, fire the unit up once just to test it out and make sure that it works okay. And then I'll, I'll put the uh, bottom panel back in place, put all the screws back, and we'll be done.